Good morning and welcome to the weekly pet pairing. Uh, I am here, Mona is here, she has turned her butt on you. Don't take it personally, she's just, you know, the kind of cat that does shit her own way. So the inspiration for today's pairing comes from Instagram and from a look that was posted by Omi, who is one of the mods in the um, Pet McGrath Labs eyeshadow palette Facebook group. You can tell she's like a super hardcore fan of Pat McGrath and she posted a look in which she had used Purple Rain in combination with the... Sorry, I'm just looking for a brush here to apply my foundation. She had posted a look uh, using the shade Purple Rain from the uh, Small Subversive La Vie and Rose palette together with the new Astral from the Bridgerton palette. And while it is a spectacular look and I highly recommend it, I haven't tried it myself, but you know, theoretically I can appreciate the uh, combination would probably look really stunning. But it kind of reminded me that I haven't really used the La Vie and Rose palette in a really long time and if you have watched my ranking you will also know that that's my least favorite Pat McGrath palette um, just because it's not a color story that I immediately think of when I think of what palette I would like to use for the day. We're definitely incorporating purple rain into the look today. I also can't remember the last time that I used that purple. It's a beautiful gorgeous purple but it leans a little bit more red um, and I tend to gravitate towards the purples that lean more blue such as the uh, purple in the Midnight Sun palette or something like Synthetica or even the purples in the uh, Dark Star and well the Star Wars palettes basically. Also I think Purple Rain tends to stain the lids a little bit because it has a bit of that red pigment and eyeshadows that have a red pigment tend to stain. And then I thought well I could blatantly copy her look and do basically the same just layering that um, astral shade over Purple Rain. But then I figured, you know what, I actually have a better idea. I would like to see what happens and that's a pairing I haven't actually done ever before. I thought it might be cute to see what happens when we pair baby subversive with mama subversive. So we're basically going for a very subversive themed look that is obviously going to, sen to be centered around a very purple eyeshadow. I have not quite decided what I want to layer over top of Purple Rain because yesterday I came home from work and um, I had the idea in my mind, so I immediately sat down to swatch and see what I would like to layer. But then I liked a bunch of the options and I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do. So we're going to decide last minute. I am grabbing my Too Faced Unicorn Tears bronzer. I've realized that now that I have decluttered my more neutral leaning bronzer, which is the Too Faced uh, Chocolate Soleil bronzer, a lot of the bronzers that are left in my collection now are warmer like orange or red leaning so I have a bit of a gap for like a more neutral bronzer. I don't really have anything anymore in a powder formula because I really wanted to have something that has a bit more of like this kind of finish or like the Nabla Skin Glazing like skin bronzing finish something a little bit more luminous because the Too Faced bronzer was just getting a little bit too overly matte for my taste. I'm just not into these like super matte formulas anymore. For my blush today I'm going to take Baby Love from Too Faced. Wow, it's a Too Faced uh, cheek situation so far. That was not intentional. I'm also very curious if you guys would be interested in a video where I kind of try to dupe um, looks that you can do with the... well, not looks. There is one very specific look that I would like to dupe um, with the Bridgerton palette with your existing Pat McGrath collection. Obviously this video will be targeted to people who already have a pretty large collection from Pat McGrath, especially my favorite look which is like the more like plummy look, the one that you can achieve with the plum matte, the shade Duchess Divinity, the beautiful metallic plum um, and the astral over top of that. That's my favorite look to come out of that Bridgerton palette and I can't shake off the feeling that Duchess Divinity was pretty much a spot-on dupe for Eleganza from the Divine Rose 2 palette. I'm now going to take this highlighter from last year's holiday collection from Pat McGrath Labs. I think that would uh, fit the vibes of the look quite nicely. But fun fact, when I was doing all the comparison swatches between Bridgerton and, you know, the rest of the Pat McGrath palette and I came to the point where I swatched Eleganza versus Duchess Divinity. I swatched them, then I looked at my hand and I got 
like my brain got really fucked for a second because I thought, wait, did I pick up the same shade? Which one is which? So I had to actually like repeat the swatches just to make sure that I actually have two different shades. And then I stared at them for like five minutes to try and detect the differences. And yes, there is like a 0.01% difference between the two eyeshadows, but frankly not enough for me to even call them different eyeshadows. They are essentially the same eyeshadow. I have not been able to stop thinking about trying to dupe that specific look with the plums and especially using Eleganza on the lids since I filmed that video. Again, it will have to be a video that I film on a day when I'm not really going anywhere, although I suspect that to the undiscerning eye I will do looks that will be almost indistinguishable from each other, so I could probably go out with two different uh, eyeballs. But just in case I can't, I'm going to do it on a day when I'm not really going to work or anything. And that is also only in the case that you are interested in seeing a video like this from me, because I know quite a lot of people have by now done their Bridgerton palette videos, um, you've seen quite a few looks, quite a few like duping the vibes uh, looks by now. And now we can jump into the eye look. Before I go into the two subversive palettes though, I do want to put a little bit of statuesque through my crease, because um, the subversive palettes palette, not palettes. The subversive palette does have this matte eyeshadow here, the very deep brown shade, but I don't want to go that like intense into my crease at the moment because I want to just put purple rain all over my lid and blend it out through the crease. But I do feel like I would like a little bit of something neutral through there and I thought the perfect shade to start as usual would, would be statuesque. So I'm just taking my big fluffy brush here and I'm going to apply a light, hopefully not to an um, intense layer of statuesque. Also probably most of you are following and enjoying just like I am the throwback series that Alicia from Kinky Sweat has started on her channel. She's basically revisiting all of the Mothership palettes and doing a bunch of looks. I think that's really really cool and even though I know these palettes so so well and I use them myself all the time, I still find that I can, you know, get inspiration from the looks that she's doing. For instance, the other day she busted out the Bronze Seduction palette and she did a look where she put one of the lighter matte brown shades, well, the light matte brown shade that's present in that palette, all over her lid. And then she, <clears throat> excuse me, and then she applied that flaky bronzy rose shade over top of that and it gave it like a completely different hue. I had never thought of doing that because I thought, well, that shade is so intense on its own, it doesn't really matter what you put underneath it unless you're just applying a few flakes to give that bronze rose glitter, but if you apply it to full opacity it will probably just look the same, no matter whether there is a, a light brown underneath it or not. But it did actually look much different compared to what I remember from that shade, so I cannot wait to replicate that look myself. And now I'm grabbing the La Vie and Rose Mini Subversive palette and going straight into this beautiful purple shade here, the shade Purple Rain, which like I said I'm just going to be applying all over my lid because frankly I can't remember if I've ever actually done that. I've used it as a liner, I might have used it in the outer corner, but I don't think I've ever done a look where it takes the spotlight all over the lid. So I'm going to do that using my Sonia G Worker Pro brush. And this shade is not a metallic, it's also not a matte, it's one of those satin shimmer shades that Pat does really well, which can be both used as sort of like a matte as well as a shimmer because you can intensify them by, you know, applying a bit of glitter glue or spritzing your um, brush with Fix Plus. They are not the same as the two baked shades that she has introduced in her Bridgerton palette. The two pink shades that she introduced in the Bridgerton palette, those are some sort of a strange baked gelée formula which somehow incorporates a matte eyeshadow with a slight bit of a sheen to it, but these eyeshadows mostly behave like matte, whereas something like Purple Rain really will pop a little bit more if you wet your brush, for instance. Okay, now that I have packed quite a bit of this shade on my lid, I'm going to start to slowly blend it out. I cleaned my brush here on a little microfiber fiber cloth, by the way, because I don't want to deposit any more color in the crease. I just want to blend out whatever is already on my lid into statuesque. Going in straight with a 
deep intensely pigmented eyeshadow like that can be a little bit daunting so I recommend you take your time and uh, most of all that when you deposit this color you start here very close to your lashes and then without packing on any more color you start to bring it up and blend it through your crease and in between those steps give your brush a little bit of a wipe down on a micro microfiber bleh, why is microfiber cloth such a difficult word to say for me microfiber cloth or a little paper towel or whatever you have laying around because you want to be able to manipulate this shade in your crease without actually packing on more color so make sure that you've cleaned your brush really well by the time you reach your crease because you can always go back and pack more on your lid but if you apply too much through your crease and you blend that up you are going to look very dramatic very fast speaking of words are you guys also obsessed with wordle i was not aware of this app until about a week ago when one of my colleagues seemed very concentrated to be staring at her phone during our lunch break and then I asked what she was up to because it seemed like she was playing some sort of like a word game I was like oh are you playing some sort of like a word game something new that I haven't heard uh, about before and before you know it five minutes later all of us were staring down her screen at the end of our lunch break trying to figure out the word and ever since then I've been completely obsessed with um, playing that game daily I have y I'm yet to lose on the English wordle I have once lost on the Dutch six letter wordle so the Dutch also have a version of the game which is called wordle and it comes in two versions the original version of wordle is with five letter words and the Dutchies also have a five and a six letter version of that and for those of you who are not familiar with wordle wordle is like a word of the day so you only have one word per day that you have to guess it's always five letter words and basically you just start guessing what the word is and then as soon as you get a match you will have the the, the letter say in a different color and depending on whether you guessed the position of the letter and the actual letter it will turn green or if you guess the letter but you didn't guess the position of the letter right it will turn yellow and if the letter is not at all present in the world the word it will turn gray by the way what i'm going to do now is just uh, continue packing a little bit of purple rain in the outer um, corners of my eyes just to intensify that purple over there and basically it's um i don't know it's a very addictive game you get six tries so you can uh, go up till six times and then if you don't guess the word you basically lost but like i said i am yet to lose the english word i've always been able to guess the word although yesterday yesterday almost got me i only got it on the last try and i thought well if that's not the word then i'm really fucked but the word was proxy i uh, had a bit of a hard time guessing it but i think a lot of people may have struggled yesterday let me know if you're also playing word though it's very fun to see how everyone has developed their own strategy for playing the game. Obviously, what you want on your first two tries basically is to figure out what vowels are present in your word and you're not too worried about the consonants. Wow, I'm looking at the viewfinder now and also in the mirror and it is just so beautiful, this shade on its own. But, of course, we're not going to leave it uh, there. We're going to do a bit of layering. So, the doubt that I was having a little bit yesterday is, uh, am I going to layer the blue with the purple shift, so this one, or am I going to layer VR pink? Because VR pink also looks absolutely beautiful when you lay layer it over the purple. It gives it a very interesting hue. And to be honest with you, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the VR pink shade than to the... Um, is that blitz what's that shade called whatever i don't know i don't remember the name of the shade it's a beautiful like purple blue duochrome and because you know it's purple and blue and it seems like such an obvious pairing i would actually like to do the vr pink shade because i think that might look really neat and i'm going to apply like just the iniest miniest amount of glitter glue basically because I'm trying to scrape out the absolute last bits of uh, Pixie Epoxy by Firini because now I think I'm just kind of struggling to get anything out of there and I'm going to retire it very soon but I want to apply here a little bit in the inner corner and I just want to take that here on like the very lower part of the lid because that is where I would like to apply VR Pink so now I'm going to just use my fingers and layer VR pink over top of the purple and I'm very curious 
the effect that that, that would give. Wow, that looks really beautiful, you guys. I'm sorry. I know the blue would look really spectacular too, but dang, VR pink together with purple rain is looking really, really gorgeous. So going back to Wordle, I've heard from a lot of people that they have figured out that they can always start with the word adio because it contains the biggest amount of vowels. But I was talking to one of my colleagues yesterday about it and she and I shared the opinion that there's no fun in turning the game into this like formulaic thing where you always kind of basically do the same things and it's just a little bit boring. So we like to start with words that, like my personal strategies, I like on my first try to always have a word which contains an A and an E. And then in my second try, I try something with an O and an I just to get as many of the more, you know, um, frequent vowels out of the way. In my inner corners, I'm going to um, apply this shade, the champagne gold shade. And over top of that, I'm going to layer a bit of the uh, astral orchid shade. I think it's called astral orchid. So if you're not playing Wordle and you become addicted to it because of me, you are welcome. And if you are playing, I would love to hear what your personal strategy is. And now I'm going to, like I said, go into the Astral Orchid shade and layer a little bit of that. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to try to use my finger because that Astral Orchid shade is that dry flaky texture that Pat does really well, only in this specific shade it's not done very well because it's just very dry and it's very difficult to work with. And for me to say that one of her Astrals is difficult to work with, you can imagine we're, we are talking serious shit here. And if you thought that we're not going to incorporate the blurple duochrome into the look, then you are deeply wrong. I'm now going to take this shade and apply it all over my lower lash line. And I can tell you from just layering the shade on the back of my hand yesterday that this shade over purple rain looked really, really beautiful as well. So I would highly recommend checking out that combination as well. If you decide to recreate a similar look or you felt inspired to you know, pair your subversive palettes together. Now I can see that towards my outer corner I'm not getting enough of definition, so I think I'm going to take a little bit of purple rain over there. As you may already have noticed, I added one last crucial detail to the look which unfortunately I did not feel. Um, I did apply a little bit of a blue, like a very intense royal blue eyeliner in my waterline and I really think it added something to like the lower lash line and the whole look altogether. I kept my lips pretty simple and pretty nude pink so I have a combination of Anita which is part of the NARS Audacious lipstick line and over top of that I applied the tiniest bit of Pat's Ellie Angelic Lost Gloss because I thought it would add this beautiful like soft layer of purple pink no not purple pink sparkle to the look anywho I'm going to wrap this video up and head to work as usual thank you so much for watching don't forget to let me know what you thought about this look like I said instead of taking it into the more pink direction you could absolutely layer the blue purple duochrome over top of purple rain and it will look really really beautiful and it is a look that I will eventually try out myself uh, because I'm just still curious how that's going to look on the lid at least when they were swatched on top of each other, they looked really beautiful. And just FYI, if you were curious what else I swatched over top of Purple Rain, I also swatched um, Lavendering from the Risque Rose Quad and that looked so beautiful as well because the sparkle in Lavendering is more intense than the uh, VR Pink shade, for instance. VR Pink is still a very sparkly shade, but Lavendering has a more intense, like, uh, sort of like bigger particle glitter chunks in it and it looked really beautiful layered over top of each other. Another pairing I would highly recommend is Purple Rain and Astral... what's the shade called? That blue purple shifter, the really sparkly astral shade from the Utopian Dream palette. That was chef's kiss. Try that out for sure as well. I'm just, you know, here giving you ideas what to do with Purple Rain, basically, if you would, if you wanted to play with that shade, but you don't necessarily have the subversive palette or you didn't want to take it into a pink direction. I'm just telling you there are so many possibilities out there because Purple Rain is just so incredibly stunning. Anyway, now I'm going to really shut up and get on with my day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!